Hello, and thank you for your interest in our how-to video on quick enablement for work from home and remote desktop access. In this video, we will show you how to set up a connection broker in Gateway, how to connect desktops to the broker remotely, and how to enable end users to connect to remote desktops via any browser. Please keep in mind that this video assumes you have already downloaded the available pre-configured and packaged VMs and read our documentation. If you have any questions on how to access these VMs in our documentation, please visit our website, contact the Scale Computing Representative at 877-722-5359, or email us at workfromhome at scalecomputing.com. Once you have downloaded the Connection Broker and Gateway from us and followed the configuration steps included with the download, to get the IPs assigned to both the broker and to the gateway, there's one additional step that you're going to need to follow on the gateway. What that is, once you log into it, is to run this command right here, leostream dash gateway space dash dash broker space and use the IP here that you assigned to the broker. Bear in mind, you run this command on the gateway. It's what tells the gateway which broker to work with. Now once you have completed that and you know what your IPs are, it's simply a matter of pointing a browser at the broker. Logging in as admin, the default credentials are admin and Leo. Once you've logged in, you're going to take several steps through the left here. Step one, you're going to stop at Downloads and grab a copy of the LeoStream agent. This is the small piece of code that you will install either directly or through a GPO directly on all of the physical desktops in your environment that you wish to bring under management and reflect via HTML5 out to your user base. If you have non-Windows machines in the environment, desktops such as Macintosh, Linux, etc., you can use the Java version. Now, from here, we're going to jump down into setup. The first thing that you do, tell the broker about your authentication, whether that's Active Directory, LDAP, etc. Add an authentication server and simply run through the screens right here. Tell it about the DC, the domain name, the IP of the DC, and credentials so that the broker is able to search for users. And once you look at moving into actual VDI, has credentials that can join machines to the domain should that be the direction that you're looking to go. If you have a large domain and you're only wanting to search from a specific point in the subtree, specify that right here. Make sure that user allow user logins from this authentication server are selected and hit save. Now from here, we're going to drop down to gateways. Here you're going to tell the broker about the gateway is a very simple process. Give the broker the name that you want the gateway to be known as just internally to you. The IP address or URL that is associated with your outside facing, outside to the world facing internet interface, NIC and IP, that you're going to port forward to the gateway on port 443 and then specify the internal IP address, internal to your network IP address of the gateway itself, and hit save. Now from here, this is the part where you go ahead, set up your port forward. That varies from router type to router type, firewall to firewall, but it should be a very simple matter. The only port you need to forward is port 443. Make sure and in almost all cases, this is already set to allow outbound and related inbound traffic. 
Now, from here, we're going to jump forward and go install the agent into a desktop machine. Now, this can be done via GPO, uh, GPO using silent switches. This also can be done manually. Let's jump over to one of the remote physical desktops in the environment to install the agent and verify the remote desktop protocols enabled. Right here, I've downloaded the agent directly to this machine. The easiest way to do that is to simply point the browser on that desktop machine at the broker, go to downloads, and it'll download that agent directly for you. If you're going to do this manually, it's simple. Double click, you have to license, next. Don't bother with either of these for now. They're just not applicable to what we're, attying, uh, what we're accomplishing with this setup. There are advanced feature functionalities that can come into play later as you expand your virtual desktop environment. Here we're going to go ahead and supply the IP address of the broker. And then simply hit install. It's that simple. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do while we're here is go ahead and go into settings and control panel. Right here in system and security system. And verify that RDP remote desktop is enabled turned on, okay? And make sure the users that need to have it have access. The user that owns this desktop, I should say. Okay. Now from there, we're gonna jump back directly to here. Once the agent is in and installed, it's already reporting home to the broker. So if we jump up here to centers, you will see an enrolled desktops center that has been created online. And since we've only installed one so far, we'll see just one. As we add additional desktops, they will show up here. Let's jump down here to resources, desktops. This is where it ties all together for you. That desktop we just added is Christian HP desktop. We simply come in here, hit edit, we know the agent's working because all of the MAC address and IP address information as well as the OS type is being properly reported in here. By default, this sits at policy assigned from a pool. We're going to want to change that. We're going to change that to hard assigned to a specific user and simply start typing the domain user, uh, user ID of the user whose desktop this is it's set to available and hit save. Now from here we're going to go configure how our users can get to their desktops from their browsers. Protocol plans, edit the default protocol plan. Now this top section this is for only realistically users that are there in the office and that's not what we're solving for today. What we're solving for is work from home getting people able to be virtually at their desktops. The way that we're doing that is via a browser. Now, LeaStream understands different types of connections and what they're coming from inherently. So what we want to focus on is what to do here in the web browser category. By default, RDP is set to 1. We want to change that. We're not trying to push RDP sessions out via the gateway to those remote desktops. We want that firewall that a browser provides in place, keeping what's your data inside your network and keeping what's on that user's home machine to that home machine. We're going to come in and change a Leostream HTML5 viewer, viewer from do not use to one. Then. From this drop-down, we're going to specify the gateway. If these are Windows boxes. Make sure that the protocol RDP is specified. The connection gets made between that user's physical desktop and the gateway. Here you're telling uh, the broker what protocol to use to make that connection. 
You also have several other options you can en enable or disable right in here, up to and including giving your users the ability to print documents locally that they're working on in their browser session. File transfer, optional and entirely at your control. The last thing that you're really going to be concerned about right here is matching the level of security for those RDP sessions to what you've got configured for RDP in the desktops. Network level, well, that's right here. If this checked box is on, it's network level and driven off their credentials. If this checked box is off, it's not. Standard. Alternatively, you can simply say, let the server choose. Okay? At this point, you're ready, provided that you've done your port forward. Point your, your users at that external world-facing URL or IP address. Make sure they're using HTTPS in the link that you send them, because this entire infrastructure is built on Secure Sockets layer, SSL, and HTML5. Okay? That's how this stays secure throughout the chain. They simply come here, type in their domain credentials like they always have, like they do when they're sitting at work, and their password, hit sign in. The second they do that, their desktop and any other desktops that you've made available to them show up right here. All they need to do is simply click on that link for their desktop in a brand new pop-up window up comes their desktop right there in the browser. Performance driven entirely by capabilities local to the machine and the bandwidth they have available. Looks, acts, work just like their normal work desktop environment because it is their normal work desktop environment with no having to lift and shift to the cloud, no having to go and buy tons of new devices and laptops and trying to provision VPN, et cetera. This truly enables work from anything, anywhere that has a browser and internet access. 